Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I am Aditya and today we have an exciting tutorial lined up for you. We are diving into the world of web development with .NET Core, focusing on how to integrate Microsoft account authentication into your applications. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps to seamlessly add authentication support, allowing you or allowing users in your tenant to log in and get authenticated with ease. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting out, this tutorial will help you create a secure and user-friendly login experience. So grab your favorite coding beverage and let's get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest tech tutorials. Let's dive in. Now we do have a small prerequisite for this tutorial and that's a basic .NET Core web application. This is the web application we developed in our last video. So the link is in the description if you want to check that out. Um, the web application is a Razor page based .NET Core web application and it has the simple functionality of when you fetch or get to the home page a random number is generated in this case it's ending with 276 and if you make or type a number and submit it it will change those randomly generated numbers with whatever number you have typed so that's a very uh, basic exercise we did in the video that we did before to understand how we can manipulate states on razor pages on fetching and post operations but that's not the point of this video that's just an application that we have right now in our hand and we want to add on top of this the authentication mechanism so the first step is to register an application on microsoft azure so i am on portal.azure.com and i am looking for app registration and over here i am going to go straight into new registration i'll make sure that it's a multi-tenant application that we are registering so that users across different tenants can log in or use this application. This is the redirect URI. So uh, we are going to have a web application that will after authentication redirect to some URL, which for now let's leave it. So it's an optional field. We can change it up later. Mm, so that's, the, that's fine. Let's move on with giving this application a name. So, uh, I'm just going to call it test1 and then we have the register button to register our application. For more clarity I'm going to stick with test app1 and um, yes that will do it. So once the process is completed test app1 is ready as a resource and in the overview of it itself we have application client id which is very essential because we will be using this from our dotnet core application to identify this application on azure and once we are able to uniquely identify this application we will use a secret key to gain access to use this application so uh, let's head on to our dotnet core code Let's take a moment to uh, summarize or reiterate on what we have on this repo or in this code directory. So we have pages which are razor pages. We have index page, we have privacy page, we have about page. And the shared are the just top layout that will be the nav bar on the top. And uh, error dot error pages to throw the page that throws up when you do something that's not expected or you are heading towards a route that's not expected. So that's about pages. Then we have app settings.json where we put our configurations, uh, basically uh, some constants or some uh, environment specific configurations. We just put it there and then we can pick it up from uh, there into our code. And then we have program.cs where the uh, entry point of the application lies in where we put all our middlewares and line them up together to make the .NET Core work in the fashion that we wish for it to work. So that's about the repo we have. With that cleared, uh, we can now, what we are here to do is um, uniquely identify the app registered that app registration that we just did. So what we want to do is we want to 
uh, we want to put the client id app client id and the secret in the uh, configurations uh, so that will be the .json file so let's do that so now I'm just going to paste the object or structure that uh, I wished for authentication that will be authentication Microsoft and then client ID and client secret so I'm gonna paste the client ID from here I'm just gonna pick it from the overview of the test app and paste it here in client ID for certificate what we need to do is we need to first create one so it doesn't matter what I'm going to add description um, it's created I'm just going to pick the value from here and drop it in my app settings dot development dot json now also let's take a moment to add the redirect URI so the platform is web and redirect URI will be the local host followed by sign in dash Microsoft so make sure that you enter the port correct for us it's 7003 and we are doing all this in manage and authentication for our registered app where we just added the platform and the redirect URI now to use this authentication we need this library that's microsoft.aspnetco.authentication.microsoft account so make sure you have installed it on your project in NuGate so you have added the library from NuGet manager and once you have done that you are ready to use the namespaces that I'm going to add over here we are going to use these three namespaces or you uh, that's authentication cookies and Microsoft account and once we have that we just uh, we are just ready to uh, add the middleware for cookie based authentication so our authentication will be uh, via cookies we will be passing the tokens and authentication and we are mentioning that uh, we are performing the authentication to this application so we are passing the registered app client id and the client secret over here to make sure that we are connected to that registered app and the authentication sessions that we will generate or uh, sessions that will be we, our application will conduct will be cookie based so that's all that we have added on this by these lines of code uh, on the middleware and that will do it so that's it now I need to specifically mention where all I need to enforce that authentication is required so there are three pages index and privacy and about and the way to explicitly mention that to access these uh, these models or these pages uh, we expect that the user authorizes itself uh, the, the framework suggests that we just add author authorize on top of the public class definitions for the models so just let's do that um, that's pretty straightforward we just need to add authorize in square brackets on top of the public class definitions so that's coming from app net code dot authorization namespace got automatically added for me now I'm going to just do the same for all the pages privacy and about so now let's test if the authentication is working so I'm gonna go to the port localhost 7003 and we got redirected so I'm going to sign in with uh, let's say some account or some user on my tenant so what I will do is I'll go to my tenant and I'll go to IDs and users uh, let's, let's pick this test user so I will sign in with this test user the password is <laughs> James Bond at the rate 007 uh, never I'm not saving this it says we are signing into test app one it's unverified I'm going to accept that because we know what we are doing and we got redirected to our application uh, but what about the user information can I show that on my screen so basically cool that we are able to sign in with a user but how do we get access to those user informations and use them to show to the user that you are signed in as this person or something like that so let's do that 
So this should be quick. I'll stop the application. Let's go to index.cshtml.cs. Here we are going to add the code to display the user information on our application. So index page is the home page and we want to show the name of the user who is signed in. And while we are doing so, we also want to learn how it's done. So this is where we are going to add the code. Let's do that. So we will be using system security.claims to get the claim types so that we can from that get the username and email and information that's available. So for that, let's create a variable that can store username. So it's going to be a string username. Uh, we want to allow get and set operation on that. So get and set. Well, that looks good. Let's add private set. So we do not want anyone to set it. Uh, uh, over here on get, so let's raise the page on get. We are doing a bunch of things. Uh, let's add that if user.identity is authenticated, meaning that if the user is authenticated, we want to set the username variable. So. Uh, let's do that if user.identity is authenticated uh, we want to set the username previously above defined as user.find first claim type types.name so let's let me type that and we want to get the value of this so so this looks good so let's make sure we are not missing anything. Looks good. Uh, set is red. So yeah, it makes sense. We need the username to be public, but set method to be private. Now this looks good. And uh, now that we have the username being set, uh, whenever we open the index page, we can add the same on the HTML page itself. So over here uh, after welcome, I want to add an h2 element from HTML and I'll just say hello username so that will be at the rate mo model that's raise a page syntax and dot username. Now let's quickly run and see what's happening. Uh, so we should be getting hello test. Yeah, that's that's correct. Our username is test and we are seeing hello test. Let's see if we can also add the email ID along with the username. So in the brackets, I want to add model dot uh, user email. Now, of course, this will not work because we haven't defined user email on the model in the CSHTML.cs. So let's do that. Just like we had username, we want to have user email equal to user dot find first claim types dot email dot value so let me type that and we also want to define the user email as a string public string so uh, i'll just set it as user email now this looks good let's run the application and see what's happening uh, we are getting let's let's refresh this page uh, model dot user email no that's not it uh, what did we miss okay at the rate capital M should be there so uh, now the syntax of razor page is correct let's hot reload and yes it shows test at the rate my domain dot on microsoft.com so that's correct and we are there and also that's a wrap for today's tutorial i hope you found this guide on integrating microsoft account authentication into your dotnet core web applications both informative and easy to follow by now you should have a solid understanding of how to set up seamless and secure login experiences for your users if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow developers don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest tech tutorials. If you have any questions or run into any issues, drop a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching and happy coding. See you.